Uh, you know what, John, I really appreciate you allowing me to record this. I meant to ask you that before. So I am recording this. Thank you very much. You'll notice just, that our Just team... don't forget you're recording it and go all Matt Stewart. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that our team is uh, very adept at uh, using Zoom and they're all muting themselves. Uh, we are gonna have a Q&A at the end. And so we will allow people to um, raise their hand or type questions into the chat box. So I'll be checking the chat box if you wanna do it that way. Uh, the raise your hand thing. I think I'll be able to do, there's quite a few screen. Matt Cashman, you don't have your camera on? Come on. There's quite a few screens here to go through. So uh, we might have to do the, uh, the chat as our way of asking questions. I'm gonna get started. Uh, there's still a couple people rolling in, um, like the great Max Alessi just showed up. Alina just got in here. So nice to see you all. I wanna just start off with, you know, we start our VP meetings and, and a lot of our big group meetings with a positive focus. And, uh, you know, we start our VP meetings with what's one of the great things that happened since we last saw you. And I just want to say that this year I'm blown away by our team. I mean, this is a tough, a tough job. And we already have a lot of people that don't make it through. We have a lot of people that think that they can work hard and they go to training and two weeks later, they realize I can't work hard. We have a lot of people that deal with rejection and people saying no and you can't have my lead. You can't have this estimate that I told you you could have. You can't have the job. You're too young. You're too whatever it is. And we have to learn to build the confidence to fake it till we make it, overcome all that. And then this year happened. And we, our company does great in recessions. So we knew that we would be able to handle a recession. And we've got one. Um, having everybody stay at home was a new challenge. And uh, we're always impressed by the group of people that come out of college work. We've had Congress people, we've had business leaders, we have people sell companies for a billion dollars. We've had lots of great people. This year, though, I think we will have a, an alumni base that we're, we really have never ever seen before. The attitude, uh, I heard someone say, Corona will no longer have any effect on my business two weeks ago. And that person that said that, the numbers that are going on in Illinois are better than last year. Some of the numbers look like it was spring break. Corona will have no effect on Illinois is what Kyle told me. Much better than doing your best, John. Adaptability. I was telling John, we've been developing this sales process for 27 years. We're pretty good. When we started, our booking rate was like 18%. Now it's like 30%. 27 years of perfecting our sales program and we changed it in one week and our booking rate's higher than it used to be. Just amazing how adaptable you all are. And then the aggressive drive, like I'm saying, putting up the same numbers as last year, but you can't go marketing door to door. You only can use our old leads, doing estimates virtually and booking jobs, $10,000 jobs, $20,000 jobs, $30,000 jobs. It's absolutely amazing. So my positive focus is how amazing you all are. And I can't wait to see how many CEOs and political and religious and whatever other leaders we have come out of here, you are the most proven group we've ever had in 27 years. I wanna let everybody know that stay at home starting to lift, 20 states are changing rules today. Um, I wanna remind you though, nothing will change for our company. So we've been a necessary service in most places. Um, we've had some issues with marketing. When stay at home lifts, all our new policies stay the same. We're still doing no contact safe marketing. We're still wearing masks. We're still doing only safe estimates. We don't wanna to be touching customers' doorknobs or touching customers' hands or having them touch our pens or our phones. We want to encourage you and your generation to do a much better job of staying at, staying at home when you're sick or feel any, any feeling of sick, um, washing your hands before and after work. And today or tomorrow, we're gonna to launch our production policies. We know production starting next week for some of you. Uh, we have a solution for the lead classes. We're going to train you ourselves until the lead classes become available and you'll be uncertified, but you'll still be trained. We've got new policies for onboarded painters, cleaning stations on the job sites, wearing masks, not using the customer's bathrooms, how to handle interior work, 
what to do about tools. I use a sander and then you use a sander. We're gonna have you wipe them off with those little bleach, bleach cloths. But there's a lot of policies coming and I know you guys get a lot of emails and texts. If it comes from Matt Stewart, please read it. I don't send stuff out very often, but I know you don't watch the videos, you don't read the emails. You're gonna get some new uh, uh, production policies coming down the line. It's important that you talk to your uh, painters or your managers or your DMs or whoever you work with um, about those policies. Uh, uh, we're gonna get into John DeJulius. I don't wanna waste any more time. Um, again, if you have any questions, why don't you just put them in the chat column and I'll call on you to ask them verbally, but instead of raising hands and me scanning my screens. Um, real quick on John DeJulius. Um, John DeJulius is probably uh, the most popular person in Ohio. It used to be LeBron until he moved to a better team. Uh, but John may be the most famous and most prestigious uh, person in Ohio. I met, met him in 2004 at a presentation, and that was a year that maybe I saw 50 people give speeches and presentations, all of them world class in Dubai or Chicago or wherever it was, always to business leaders, always to prominent people. And the one that John gave that day was the best I'd ever seen. And uh, for some reason, I knew right then and there that John and I would be friends. Maybe it's personality. You'll see that John's values align with our company values. You'll see they align with my personal values, do unto others, live fully and help others do the same. Maybe I got it out of his presentation, but we've been, we've been friends ever since. Even though I've read the books that he's written and he's written lots of books, even though I've been to the seminar that he does in Ohio, which I told Jared about, is like nothing you've ever been to before. It's like going to the Disneyland of customer service. You step into a different world. Um, I still go watch him speak. Um, I still read his newsletter because I'm getting something out of it every time. Uh, John is probably the world's expert on customer service. Disneyland, Nordstrom, Starbucks, you name a company that has great customer service, probably John DeJulius is tied to that service. We've had him come speak to us a couple times. We redid our entire customer and employee service a few years back using John. And John uh, sent me a message saying, hey, I know this is a tough time for you. I like to do unto others as they do unto me. I would love to do a free deal for you and your guys. You can record it. Um, so John is here to share his insight with us and doing us a very nice favor. So without further ado, I'm gonna kick it over to you, John. Thank you. Did I say free? <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Back. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure. And I have known Matt since 2004 and um, better than anything, it's it's the relationship, friendship. Um, um, you know, I, I, I love Matt like a brother. I'm sure all of you do. So let's jump into this. Leading in a crisis. I'm going to hit four primary areas. The first one is, you know, what being a great leader really looks like today. The second one is how your customer experience is always on center stage. Your employee experience is on center stage. How a recession is a horrible thing to waste. And finally, take any questions on anything for as long as you want to ask them. All right. So being a great leader, how we lead right now says so much about us. You set the tone for your entire organization. In time of adversity and change, we really discover and find out what, who we are and what we're made of. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, tough times doesn't build character, it reveals it. And, you know, especially, you know, how young all of you are. This is such a great lesson. Um, you can't pick and choose. Can everyone check uh, if they're muted? I'm just hearing some uh, background noise. You can't pick and choose when you want to lead. We didn't choose to become leaders because we always thought it was going to be easy or we we're always going to be living in a booming economy. We, we hopefully chose to become leaders um, because we wanted to be that person that others could count on to take control, that could handle and navigate through any situation, no matter its size. And now it's that time to step up. Your employees, customers, and community, and, and probably your family are, are counting on you and they believed in you. 
So it's imperative to confidently show all your employees and customers that this is temporary and will pass, um, that we need to appreciate the anxiety and stress everyone is going through. Fellow leaders, employees, vendors, customers, um, they're all having difficult times. And whether you're an essential, whether your employees are, are working or they're, they're laid off, um, it doesn't matter. They're, they're going through anxiety like they've never gone through before. Um, I have three businesses. For nearly 30 years, I, 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 I've, I've owned and operated uh, John Roberts Spa, which is salons and spas in Northeast Ohio. I'm not active today in the day-to-day -day, day -day, day -day operations, but right now they're all closed and they have been closed for six or seven weeks and there's no date to return. So I have 150 people um, in that business that are off. And then I have the Julius Group, which is where I spend all my time and that's a, a customer service consulting. And fortunately we're pretty busy and, and getting busier and we're all working and, and busy. And then I have a, a Believe in Dreams, which is a um, like a make a wish in Northeast Ohio. So I kind of have it from every gambit of the spectrum, okay? If this isn't how you feel, I want you to screenshot this. I want, this, I want you to own it. Um, this is my quote. I've personally found that I'm at my best when my companies and I are being challenged and fighting for survival. In a strange way, I'm actually comfortable with and become more energized by the obstacles in our way. This is my nature. And while others are panicking and making short-sighted decisions, my confidence level increases. I want you to own that. Um, act like, you know, I act like I've been waiting for this day that I knew this day has been coming and we are totally poised for this. And everyone in our company is in the best place they could be. A term that Matt likes to tease me about that I've always hated. I've said this for years. I'd certainly hate it now. My three sons can't say it to me, none of my leaders can say it to me, and I can't use it, is I gave my best. That may sound mean or unsympathetic, but one of my least favorite sayings is I gave my best. To me, it's an unacceptable crutch. I don't want to hear it, all right? If I'm like, if Matt's, you know, my, you know, someone on my team, I'm like, Matt, why didn't you close that? Or Matt, why didn't we hit our numbers? Or Matt, why didn't you get a, a, a B or better on the test or whatever? And, and, and he just says, well, John, I gave my best. Oh, you gave your best. Oh, well, if you give your best, then uh, th that's all I can. Bull. Okay. When the goal is to accomplish greatness, go where no team, no person, no organization has gone before. I wasn't asking for your best. Your best is what you were capable of in the past. I'm expecting you, me, us to figure it out. Try a thousand ways. If need be, try a thousand more. I expect to innovate, lose sleep, get around it, find loopholes, research, and sweat like we've never sweated before. I gotta close my office doors because uh, they're vacuuming outside and I don't know if you can hear it, but hold on. Part of the new reality of working from home. So I have two great examples I like to give to this. The first one is if, if you've ever studied uh, the history of Steve Jobs, and if you haven't, you should. Um, you know, he, he he's just it was an amazing entrepreneur in, in so many ways. Well, Steve Jobs' employees would say he had a reality distortion field. And I guarantee you Matt has it, and every great entrepreneur has it. Which means is he was out of touch with reality. To Steve Jobs, if you could think it, if you could picture it, if you can imagine it, it was possible. So what that looked like is he'd come in and they were working on the Mac 2 or the Apple or whatever it was at the time. He'd say, all right, how long is it gonna take? And they might say, you know, six months, 12 months before it can get out and ship. And he said, nonsense, you have six weeks. And they'd look at him like he was kidding. Or he would tell them to get something like this, headphones into, this. And they'd say, that is just impossible. And he'd look at them and they would get uncomfortable and they would always figure a way out. The other example I love giving, if you know anything uh, about the, uh, the history of trying to break the four minute mile as a runner, they tried for decades, centuries, to the point where they even had lions chase men 
to see if that would get them to run faster. And that did not end well. So finally, where physicists and, and doctors came to the conclusion that the human body is incapable of running faster than a four minute mile. Until May 8th, 1956, Roger Bannister did it. Almost 12 months later to the day in a race in New York, 80% of the runners ran faster than the four minute mile. So what changed in 12 months? Did the human anatomy change? No, the belief system. And that's what great leaders do. They have a belief system. Don't accept I gave my best. Communicate, communicate, communicate. Now's the time to be transparent, right? And reduce panic. Make sure that everyone knows, you know, updates, even when you don't have updates, if you're giving up sacrifices, if you're tapping into lines of credit, if you're tapping into cash flow, share with them. Same thing with our vendors, right? In our vendors in our same situation, work with them. And know the difference between social distancing, and I'm sorry, if everyone can check their, um, their mute, we got some people that were just hearing some background of pouring drinks and drinking their drinks. Okay, know the difference between social distancing and social isolation. I love what Vern Harnish said recently, that your number one KPI, your number one metric as a leader should be tracking how many video minutes you are with your colleagues, advisors, friends, extended family. Not texting, not email, not even phone call, but video. And this is what my day looks like all day with all three of my companies, you know, different teams. We are on video Zoom calls like never before with my clients in presentations. But when I do it with my teams, the first John, thing that we go around the room, John, sorry, we started sorry, to six weeks sorry ago. To interrupt, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Do you wear the same t-shirt every day to work? Uh, this is a V-neck. Oh. And that's a uh, mock. Okay, sorry about um, that. I turn them inside out so I can get two days out of it. Can you mute yourself? So, first thing I did with my employees was I uh, asked if, uh, you know, they had to tell me, and they still have to tell me, what's the gift? What's the gift you're finding? And it, like, that was such a bizarre question. Like, you know, and they were like, what do you mean the gift? Like we're in quarantine. And, but then all of a sudden everyone started thinking about it and they started coming up with the answers. They had to come up with a new answer every day, every time we spoke. And you wouldn't believe how that changed the dynamic and the energy and got people thinking differently. And I'm to a point where I'm actually worried. There was a, a, a survey that went out, um, the other day, or I didn't, I don't know who did it, but someone shared, I don't know who answered it, but employees were asked if they felt uh, more connected or less connected in their workplace environments. And I was shocked because I knew our answer. We are so much more connected. And it said like 85% felt less. I was like, oh my God. Right, because we're at, we're building such relationships. I have 150 employees. A lot of them never met me, or if they have. I don't remember meeting them. Like you know, I'm not involved in that business. And the employees I do know, and now I'm really getting to know that I'm actually worried when we come out of this, it, how I'm going to keep those relationships up because this is such a great benefit. So make sure you're taking advantage of this. Um, pull out your mission statements, purpose, core values, your service vision statements. Remind yourself and others what your business was built on. Walk to talk, give examples, celebrate people modeling your core values, going above and beyond for each other, going above and beyond for customers. Um, and I love this quote by Winston Churchill. More is caught than is taught. More is caught than is taught. What that means as a leader, as a parent, is I can tell you all day what I want you to do, but what you see me doing is the truest teacher and you're gonna model that behavior. More is caught than is taught. Help people find and yourself find the amazing opportunities in all this. This isn't happening to us, it's happening for us. And you know, Matt said, you know, it was something about that the quarantine isn't gonna affect 
um, someone said this isn't going to affect their business. I have the opposite feeling. The quarantine is going to be the best thing that ever happened to my businesses because it has forced all three of my businesses to reinvent itself. I'm so angry in a way of the stuff we're doing now. I'm embarrassed that we didn't do three years ago. We've been talking about it, but now I'm so excited because we do have a little bit more time in our hands. And we are creating new revenue streams, better processes, education, training, products, stuff that we should have been doing years ago that I know that we're going to crush fourth quarter 2020 and 2021 and, and beyond. We are going to be in such a better situation as a business growth, flexibility, pivot, all those things than had we not had the quarantine and, and, and all this stuff. So you got to find how you can capitalize on this time and position yourself and your company to be better for it. And then the last thing is, what are you consuming? I ask this question every week, all year long. I'm a, of my leaders, I'm especially asking it now. And this only doesn't go to my leaders, this goes to my employees, whether they're furloughed or they're working. I always ask my customer experience consultants that work for me and myself, what are you consuming in your area of expertise that makes you the smartest person in the world, walking the planet at what you do. Now more than ever, we have the time, whether we're working virtually or, or temporarily not working, we need to be investing in ourselves and our future. What books and articles are you reading? What podcasts are you listening to? What videos are you watching? This is the number one way you are going to innovate, reinvent yourself and your business. We should be spending a minimum of two hours per day consuming, inhaling, information education now that doesn't have to be two straight hours between the moment we get up and the moment we go to bed we should be at easy two hours a day every one of my uh, consultants have to turn in a report each week you know quick update of what's going on and it's always on there the last part is what did you consume and they have to list it out as well as i do all right your customer experience is always on center stage how we treat our customers during these times, and I know you got several layers of customers. It might be the college students. It might be you know their the, the, the you know their customers, whatever that may look like. But how we treat our people during these times will result in how they treat us. Too many companies are doing knee-jerk reactions, drawing lines in the sand, threatening, pointing to contracts and clauses. You know, stay away from that. And this is a great, you know, now's the time to invest in your customer experience, reinvent your customer experience, disrupt your own industry. The Watermark Group showed this, the, la the, the, the biggest economic downturn before today in the last 50 years was the Great Recession in 2007 to 2009. So during the worst economic downturn in the last 50 years, they compared the bottom 10% customer experience companies in every industry to the S&P 500 to the top 10%. And you can see the bottom 10% had a negative 57% return. You can't, you can't make it. Those companies did not, many of them, most of them probably didn't make it through that time. The S&P 500 had a negative 16% better, but still not good. The top 10% companies in every industry had a positive 6% return on investment during the worst economic time you know, our country had seen in 50 years. Your customer experience is, is your best ally in any economy. Be a resource for your customers, right? Make sure we're communicating, showing concern, knowing them, and not just being a transaction, not just making a sale, right? So uh, my newest book, The Relationship Economy, is focused on this. Um, this is the thesis about it. I, I did a TED talk that I encourage you. It's titled Meet a Strangers, Leave as Friends. When you get a chance later on, part of your two hours of consuming today is Google that. It's nine minutes and 31 seconds. Show it to your employees. If you have kids, show it to your kids and live it. And basically what it is, I'll give you the highlight version right now, is there's no greater skill, any of us, old men like me and Matt, young people like you, there's no greater skill that any of us could constantly work at and teach others than the ability to build an instant rapport with, with others, whether that be a stranger, an acquaintance, coworker, customer, you name it. That's a hard thing to do. 
especially because most of your generation is relationship disadvantaged and no faults of your own. You've only known the digital age, okay? The other reason why it's difficult to do is we are, you know, even me and Matt, who grew up in a different time, we are, you know, we're on our devices more. And we're all genetically coded to be preoccupied about ourselves, right? Our business, our sons, our kids. So how do you fight that? First thing you gotta do is realize that everyone you come in contact with has an invisible sign above your head that says, make me feel important. Next thing is, how do you focus on the other person, not throw up on them about yourself? Well, here's, here's my acid test. Whether you speak to someone for three minutes or 33 minutes, you should be able to walk away and tell someone two or more things of their Ford. If you could tell someone else two or more things of the Ford or the person you just interacted with, you not only built a relationship, you own the relationship. Because to each and every one of us, Ford is our hot buttons. It's what gets us excited and talking fast, okay? Family, are they married? Do they have kids? How old are their kids? What activities are their kids into? Occupation, what do they do? Who do they do it for? What's their title? How long they've been doing it? Recreation is a lot of people's biggest uh, hot buttons. What do they like to do on the weekends, their free time, evenings, early mornings? They're, they're, they're runners, they're bikers. They you know do hot yoga. They coach little league soccer. And D, dreams. What's on their bucket list? What's their dream vacation? What's their favorite charity? What's their encore career performance that they're working towards? Focus on people's sport. Collect that. Put it in a database. Put it in your phone. Write it down. You got to make people feel something. Be a resource for your community. Um, you know, that's really important. A couple things we're doing, the salons, when we reopen, we're giving all frontline essential workers, not painters, but anyone that is working in hospitals, pharmacies, grocery stores, EMTs, a $50 gift certificate um, to our salon and spa. Heck, if you guys want one, fly to Cleveland and we'll give you a $50 gift certificate too. Um, and, and, and then the Julius Group, what we're doing for small businesses, we have this uh, online training uh, uh, software that large companies pay a lot of money for. Well, it's called My CX Trainer. We're giving it to all mom and pop restaurants, dry cleaners, barber shops, hair salons, you name it, that have been closed because of this. We're giving it away to them for free so they can use it to train their staff when they get reopened and hopefully provide a better experience. And, and so look at it. While I, I believe it's really generous, um, if you look at it from our standpoint, it doesn't cost us anything. We already have this product. We're not losing future sales because the people we're giving it to would never be a client of ours. So, and we'll get a ton of PR if they choose to go that route. Stop selling, start educating. Be careful. I know all of you get e-blasts, LinkedIn requests about, you know, hey, I can help you get more leads and more of this and more of that. If you want to be unsubscribed, unfollowed, unfriended, then keep on doing that shit. I mean, it's tone deaf. It's insensitive. It pisses me off when I get it. Now, educate me, share with me, and I'm fine. And all of a sudden I realize. You know, you, you know, maybe I could use you for this, right? But just be careful with the, 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 hey, here's what we can do. Here's what we're selling. We got a spring sale. You got to be careful with those things. There's a fine line there. Number three, your employee experience is on center stage. Be exceedingly human as leaders. Demonstrate your concern for your employees, their real fears and, and anxieties, not only professionally and economically, but socially and personally. Even though you might not have definitive answer to all their questions, let them know that you're listening and you're there and you can empathize and that you're vulnerable too, okay? Be persistent. Now's not the time to hold back. Constantly send people updates and regular communication. Even when you don't have updates, send them that, right? Don't hold back right now. No one is gonna look back in three months, eight months and say, oh my God, my boss, was so annoying with all the encouraging communication. Now's the time to, to really be reaching out to them and having those. Uh, be a resource for your employees. 
not only with how your short and long-term business strategy is and how you recover as a company, as a team, but, you know, teach them how to, to manage stress and, and, and deal with coping mechanisms, okay? By now, we should all know what we need to do and avoid to stay healthy. However, constantly checking headline news and social media during times like this become, can become an unhealthy addiction. And as well as we make it at the focal point of every conversation and dwelling on it. What we talk about, we bring about. And we need to teach ourselves and our employees, you know, and, and that's why it's great that Matt sends out communication because we as leaders have to control the narrative. Don't allow them to be hearing the narrative from the media, from the government, from social media, from their next door neighbor. You drive the narrative of what's happening, all right? Otherwise, they're going to, you know, stress and fears negatively impacts our immune system and worse, our mental health. So it's really, really important that we are there and teaching them how, you know, even that they can find the gift in their personal lives. Um, whether it's nature, fear, God, someone, something is, is telling us that we are way out of balance and we need to get back to what's most important, the human interaction, personally and professionally. And we've been given a gift. Help them find that gift. I will tell you something really cool. A CEO of mine, a client, told me that he was so addicted to headline news that he literally went on all his devices, iPhone, iPad, computer, went to parental controls and blocked himself from checking headline news. And the impact it had on him in like 48 hours changed his mental aspect and his thoughts. So that's really important. Something I, you know, I write an article each week that Matt was talking about, and it's always on customer or employee experience. About a month ago, I wrote uh, this, which, you know, is just the incredible opportunities that we can find out of the, the Corona uh, virus crisis. And it was like my most popular article and my employees loved it because I was just sharing, Hey, here's some great tips you can do at home with your family, you know, and, and here's some great tips, exercises you can do with your family. And, and here's great things, resources you can go to consume positive information. And they loved it. Okay. So when you can show that you care about your employees versus just being a bottom line, uh, you know, entity, everyone needs to become a better CEO. And the CEO stands for chief energizing officer. There's two types of leaders, energy givers and energy suckers. Let's focus on being energy givers. Energy givers raise the confidence of everyone they come in contact with. Energy givers constantly show gratitude and thanks. They give everyone else the credit. They believe in others. They're there for others when they struggle or are going through hard times. They're, they're, they're their employees' biggest cheerleaders. They find out what their employees' goals are and they help them achieve them. They are great listeners. They're willing to walk through a fire for anyone on their team and they practice what they preach. And that's an energy giver. Another word that I've become infatuated with is encourage. So every year we have to have a theme on my team. You have to come up with a theme, a word, one word for the year. 2019 was energy. That was my word. 2020, it was encourage. Now encourage has always been a fine word. Never thought of it differently than any other word until I had this epiphany. When I was writing my new book, I stumbled on an article about encourage and I read it and it said the Greek translation for encourage is to make strong. I started thinking of make encourage and I started breaking the word up encourage, right? In courage to put courage in. And all of a sudden I had like this epiphany, right? To make sure that's our job as leaders as human beings, as parents, as significant others, is I want to help put so much courage in you that you feel you can go out and do anything as a result of the self-esteem I helped you build. So what my employees do, which is really cool, is they, uh, they get a, uh, a bracelet. I wear a bracelet, Matt, you can make fun of it, and it's your word of the year. And I'm always rubbing it, and when I want to rip into someone, I remember that you know, my theme this year is to encourage, to make strong. So think about that. The last thing, then we'll go to Q&A. A recession is a horrible thing to waste. I'm probably one of the few entrepreneurs you'll ever meet 
that prefers a recession over a booming economy. Understand this, none of my businesses do better in a recession, okay? That's not why, you know, like mortgage companies because everyone starts refinancing. None of my businesses necessarily do better, but my competitors do so much worse in a recession, okay? So, you know, a recession is a horrible thing to waste. First off, when, when you grow really fast, like we all have, most businesses have in the past 10 years. Well, that's great. And I always want to grow. There's a lot of bad things that come from it, right? When we were first starting off 20, 30 years ago in any of my companies and we needed to hire someone, we'd interview 15 people to find that perfect person. Well, when we need 50, 500 new employees, we're not, you know, how many are we interviewing, right? 52. And, and, and we're hiring the best, of the applicants, not necessarily the best that's out there. And not to mention that we're keeping the C minus player that we shouldn't be, but we can't afford less employees, we need more. So that that's not really good. Um, the It's been an employee market the past five years, right? Meaning that there's record setting turnover, record, you know, you know, just this, it's been crazy. There's been more jobs available than people looking in the past five years. So what does that mean? That we have to pay $15 an hour for a $12 an hour job and not be happy with the $15 an hour employee that we're getting. So things change, right? It becomes an employer market again. There's more talent out there. Um, you know, there's, you know, the staff buy-in. When people are crushing it, my sales staff, my consultants, my hairdressers are making more money, book solid, have a waiting list, and have three offers from competitors. And I want to come and say, you know, Matthew, there's a better way. Matthew's going to look at me and say, dude, I'm making my best paycheck. I'm booked. I think I got it figured out. But all of a sudden, when the recession comes, employees become grateful. They become humble. And I want to come and say, Matthew, there's a better way. Matthew Olson becomes an, a student. So a recession is, is like a, a business enema, okay? During an economic boom, even a turkey can fly in a tornado. And there's a lot of shitty competitors out there that make us look bad in every industry. When that tornado stops, a lot of turkeys start dropping. And that's what I learned. Because there'll be 20, 30% of my competitors in all my industry that don't reopen. And you know, that's the business enema. So now there's more market share of customers. There's more talents. So that's why I prefer a recession. A couple resources, all free. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, Vidi Julius Group's YouTube channel, um, there's probably two, three, 400 short two minute video clips on there of me presenting on stage that you can grab. And, and, and a lot of my clients will forward to, uh, you know, all their employees in a weekly huddle or, or whatever it may be. And, and it just keeps them, you know, focus on the customer employee experience. So that's it. I'm going to turn it back over to Mr. Stewart. And I am more than happy to answer any and all questions on any topic. And real quick, uh, let's leave the slide up. Um, and I know there's a lot of people on this call that already get the Julius Group newsletter. Um, and I don't know where that is on there. Uh, the upper okay. left-hand corner, okay. TDG Click e-service. Yep. So you can sign if up. You want the, the slides? The slides that you just saw are in the right-hand side. If you want to download the slides. Yeah, and I think it's worth uh, signing up for the newsletter. If you're in business, and uh, we just heard it, you're in business. Maybe for the first time. Maybe it's your third year. Maybe it's your fifth year. Um, it's about the stakeholders. And so a constant reminder of how we can do better for our stakeholders, whether they're employees, whether they're customers, whether it's a community, it's worth uh, uh, consuming some, in addition to, you know, whatever's going on with stay at home in your state and whatever's going on with uh, labor in your state, it's important to consume other things. And uh, that newsletter would be a great uh, consumption. I also wanted to flag, meet as strangers, leave as friends. Uh, John said to Google that um, would be great to share with your buddies. So any of our videos or any of this that you want to share with people that are not in college works that are just your friends or your parents or your brother or your sister or your significant other, feel free. 
That time management video that I put on is a great one. All this John to Julius stuff is a good one. Is a great one too. And uh, um, and can you can you plug the the group that you support in Ohio one more time too? Because a lot of people here have not started to kind of look to the community and how as entrepreneurs they can support the community. So you mentioned uh, charity in Ohio. We have people here that are in Cleveland looking for free haircuts and may want to pay it back a little bit too. So what was the name of the organization? Uh, I'm not sure. Believe in Dreams is my, yeah, my I, I own it. Um, and it's, it's like make a wish, but it's, uh, it's, it's for non-medically related hardship uh, kids that economically disadvantaged that have just been through unbearable things that hopefully none of us can relate to. And, and, and uh, you know, a real quick story. When we go there and we say, hey, you know, you can have any dream you want. We're thinking, oh, God, you know, Disney and, you know, this. And, you know, they say a bed without bugs and they say, you know, newer, not new, newer shoes. And, you know, and, and, and that you're just like, and then I go home and I want to beat my kids because they'll complain that we're going to, you know, Disney again. Right. And so, you know, they, they, it really humbles you and makes you realize how fortunate um, we are and we want them to have the same advantages in life. Um, so if, if that's something that uh, is interesting to you, it might be nice to Google that, see how you can volunteer. I know there's a lot of people on this call that uh, start donating to charity and donating time to charity as they launch their business, which uh, you mentioned Vern Harnish. I was talking to Vern Harnish one time during the last recession, and he said the people he knew that did best during the recession mentally were the ones that focused on others the most. Um, so I want to plug that. I also want to plug this book by John DeJulius um, as, I think this was your first book, right, John? Yes, sir. There's a, quite a few of them. You'll see mine's all beaten up because I've read it so much. Mine came with this super cool hat, <laughs> which John knows this, a um, uh, little side note, this hat. Put it on his dashboard and parks wherever he wants. Yeah, this hat, when I was recruiting, <laughs> uh, would sit on my dashboard and I would go to every campus police station and I would park in the police only spot in my M5 and I'd throw this on the dashboard and for years I never got tickets. So I'm happy to have this out again. So I wanna open it up for uh, some questions. If you wanna ask a question, just type your name in the chat box because I can't see the hand raises. I'll kick it off with one. You talked about educating versus selling. And what we, what we try to do is go out and figure out what customers want and what, we, what they need, show them the cause and the effect of their problems, show them what things used to look like before it started raining and the sun came out, what it'll look like in the future, and talk to them about the different things we can do and what the benefits might be. What do we need to do beyond that to be an educator instead of a salesperson? And I listen, if I'm calling you, and inquiring the, the game on like you know I'm, I'm inquiring it's just you know that blind solicitation or hey hey you need you need hey I'm, I'm doing you know I have a, a clothing company I like to buy for and they keep on sending me these emails of like you know their new spring line and I'm just like you know dude I'm like I unsubscribe I'm like you know I just feel like it's insensitive you know at least I did initially you know now I'm getting a little bit back to normal mentally as a consumer but um, you know, just coming out without your wares. I have a, a, um, a cleaning company, Florian and, and all this, that we work with Coit cleaners. They're all over. And they asked me the same question. And so you could see if this applies to you. But I said, don't tell me about, you know, your spring deals. Tell me about how I can sanitize my house and my business is better because you're the expert. And so for safety, for customers, for employees, peace of mind, just give me a bunch of tips. And then they did that. And when they were giving me these tips on how I can do it myself, one of the things I thought of is, well, you know, hell, why don't I bring them in and, 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 and just do it for me, right? Because, you know, they, they're better at, but if they just would have came at me with, hey, we could do this, we could do this. I, I feel like, you know, they were, you know, car salesmen. But the, the, the fact that they were teaching me how to do it myself, if I wanted to, um, I really like that. And I realized that, you know, why do I need to reinvent the wheel? I'll just let them come in and do it. So I don't know how that looks in your world. Okay. 
So we have some other questions. Kate and Herman, I think you're the first one. I don't know if you can unmute yourself. I just unmuted you. Um, I don't think he can, so. Uh, Kaden uh, said, is there anything you could do in particular to motivate, to do for motivation during this weird time? So if it's self-motivation, it's, it's all those things. You know, I'm just on a regimen. I, I think uh, the quarantine exaggerates who we are as a person. And if you're lazy and a victim and you're like, oh my God, I can't work out because my gym's not open. Well, you know, are you an idiot? I mean, you know, gyms weren't invented for the first, you know, 6,000 years and people worked out, right? And so, you know, whatever, you, know, you just, you just gotta, you know, go to, go to uh, the TED Talks and, 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 and Google the top 10 TED Talks of all time. And I don't care what their topics are. They may be topics you don't think you're in and you will be wound up after watching a couple of them, right? You know, watch Simon Sinek, Jack Daly, whomever, and, you know, just feed yourself that type of stuff. Uh, Guy Kawasaki, Tom Bilyeu, uh, Tony Robbins, whomever, whatever turns out, Brene Brown, and you will just be fired up, um, you know, and, you know, make sure. And then, you know, watch who you're surrounding yourself with. Like, you know, if, if someone's negative, don't talk to them for a while. You know, if they just want to tell you how, how horrible the light, you know, the, the world is, and they think this is a conspiracy and this is a, a Republican or a Democratic, who cares? That could be true, it might not be true, but I can't control it. Um, you know, that's why I love talking to Matt, because whenever I get off the phone, I'm like, you know, inspired to do something. But if, if for some reason you find people give you the opposite, they're energy suckers, you can pick and choose how often, how much time you give them. Yeah, Mike Cato says you are the sum of your five closest friends. So think about that. Are you hanging out with people that are kicking your ass and that you want to be like? Or are you hanging out with people that are smoking bowls and staying in bed all day? Because it rubs off. CJ, I, 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 I To me, there's, sorry, there's, to me, there's two types of friends. You know, and there's a friend that, you know, you know, Matt, let's go grab a beer after work, right? And I tell him, you know, Hey, as long as I'm home by seven, I promised Claudia I'd be home for seven for dinner. So at 6.15, Matt says one or two things to me. Hey, let's place another order. Or hey, John, you know, if you leave now, you can make it home by seven, right? Which type of friend are you? Which type of friend do you want to hang around? Or the type that says, hey, you want to go get a workout in tomorrow? Or, you know, do you want help studying for that test? Or screw it, graduation, you're still going to graduate whether you get a, you know, whatever you get on that. So, you know, be careful of, of which type of friend is, is influencing you. All right. So CJ, I'm trying to unmute you. You put, yeah, you're ready to go, CJ. Oops, I just remuted you. So what yeah, is your I question? Just had my, I had my question answered. Uh, it was about the, mainly the difference between the selling and educating. Okay. Um, and Max, I'm gonna ask you a question for you because I couldn't unmute you. Uh, so Max Alessi asks, balance between growing too fast and taking advantage of opportunity. Lots of companies are not pushing into the market right now. How do you scale responsibly? That's, you know, I don't know if anybody has the answer. I mean, every great company is guilty of it. Starbucks almost went out of business in 2007 before the economic downturn because they were growing too fast. And it's so seductive. It's so... It's what every entrepreneur wants. But then you wake up one day and you're looking around and you're like, who are all these people? Like, you know, and I don't, Matt, you, you know, you've been through it on both sides, good times and bad times. I don't know the answer because it's hard to, to not do that. That's what we're built to do. We want, and we want to do it, you know, because we want to have more opportunity and, and have all of you someday be, you know, VPs and, and all this. Um, but it, it, it's so seductive in the same you know, thing. Matt, what's your answer? Uh, my answer would be to focus on the, the vision and the strategy of the organization, which is usually formed when you're of sound mind and body. You're not under stress. We have a strategy. We have a vision. Here's where we're going. Here's our plan. And then use your values as a decision maker. So for example, we could go into the business of scanning and uh, scanning people entering federal buildings with thermometers. There's a big need for that. We have lots of people. We're great at hiring. We're great at training. Simple. 
but there's nothing about that in our strategy. Our strategy is to focus on our core competency, to take very small steps outside of our core competency, to not go off and start chemical companies and crazy stuff because we don't know what we're doing. So it's easy to miss that opportunity because we focus on our strategy. Then you have your values. And we have our corporate values, earn the right to work here, um, referability habits. Um, you have your personal values. So if you use your values as a decision maker and you're comparing it to your vision and your strategy, that will help you grow more responsibly. Um, that would be my, my answer, John. No, it's a great answer. I, I think you're you're right, a hundred percent. Yeah, someone should pay me twenty thousand. Yeah, I, I know. I hate when the host is smarter than the uh, expert. Okay, Cody, you're up. You're unmuted. What is your question? Yeah. So, if you do identify an energy sucker within your business, what's a good way to bring it up to them without like without being too forward to the point where it's like you don't want them to get defensive? You, like they're still a good team player sometimes. I'm still like a valuable can like a valuable employee, but how do you bring up and just put it on the table with like in a professional way? Uh, you know, one, be the role model, right? You know, a, a, a quote I love is go show the proper way. And when necessary, use words, right? Like, you know, I love that. Like, just don't be a finger pointer saying, you know, hey, Cody, you gotta, you gotta be more positive and walk away. Right. right? You know, you know, show that. And then if he's, if he or she is, is someone that's reporting to you, I think that's a great way to, you know, sit down, experience, share, say, you know, Cody, I see a lot of similarities, man, that I used to screw up and I'd come in guns a blazing and, you know, not realizing I just, you know, devastated and, and you know, versus coming in and, and, and showing people, hey, you know, Bailey, you're doing a great job and, you know, this, 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 and then show her the opportunity um, in some other areas um, that, you know, you stepped on landmines, you know, and maybe Matt or, or a coach or whoever took you under the wings and, and helped you see it. Um, now you're, you're a mentor. Now you're a coach. You're, you're helping them get to their next, you know, you know, ladder or whatever, no pun intended, um, faster as a result. Okay. Thank you. And I'm Brianna McCoy, you get the last question. Um, yeah, my question is just like, um, I'm in the other side of the business, Home Genius Exteriors, and a lot of the stuff with the leadership and management team, we're changing a lot week to week, day to day with what we're doing within our business. And um, I have the marketing team underneath me, and I feel like when I'm changing things in each work shift, like each work shift this past like two weeks, we've been doing different things them and I feel like I'm more so just telling them I don't feel like I'm leading them with the changes so how do you suggest you know leading the group with the changes that I'm making like shift to shift versus just telling them that this is what we're doing um I mean ho hopefully you understand the why behind it right versus just kind of blasting me with information and a, a, it feels like a fire hose and then it always to employees feel like you know why are you doing this? Like, like you guys just make shit up to make my job harder. I mean, that's how it feels like for an employee, right? Versus you coming out and all explaining the why and there's a, there's logic behind this. We have found out that we are more successful or, you know, your job is too complicated the way it is. So, you know, while the, there's going to be a learning curve, this system will actually make it us easier to do business with your job easier. So making sure you're just not, you know, informing, but you're educating on the why and, and, and the rationale behind it can totally change everything. And Matt might have more specifics to that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're muted, Matt. Thank you. I could add to that, but I want to give Adam Columbus, just because he, he reaches out to me more than just about anybody, I want to give him a chance to get the last question. So he gets and, and Matt, I, I, I don't turn into a pumpkin at um, you know the top of the hour. So. Okay. Cool. Adam, go ahead. You're up. Thanks so much, Matt. Um, awesome. So I guess my question was, uh, what other motivation advice could you give employees who know they can do really good at the job if they just try it a little harder? You know, um, how have you seen your efforts pay off in the job? And, you know, how have you kind of seen yourself become rewarded because of that? We can't change everyone. Um, you could, you know, really, I mean, you know, my, my, 
I motivate myself. That's all I worry about motivating. And when I do, I don't always do. But when I focus on motivating myself, I have a lot less morale issues. Um, but when I come to work with the world of travel and payroll and my son getting in trouble, you know, and I, I become disengaged, I start getting morale issues popping up. So first off, you know, again, more is caught than is taught. Make sure that Adam is, is doing it. And then the second thing is, is, is then coaching people, pulling them aside and, you know, saying to a young Matt, I see a lot of potential in you, Matt. You, you're, you know, really, and make sure it's genuine. Make sure you are pointing out the stuff that he's really good at. Um, and, 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 you know, Matt, I, I, I could see if you, if you could just, you know, get this and this, if you wouldn't treat people as a transaction or an inconvenience sometimes, if you wouldn't multitask when, you know, you're speaking to a customer on the phone or a, a coworker comes in, you know, whatever the environment is and really look in their eyes, listen to them with their eyes and, you know, give them some tips. Dude, there's, you, you, there's no ceiling for you. You will crush it. You know, and that's going to pump him or her up um, and, and, and taking great advice. And again, experience sharing. Man, I used to do this so bad. I used to, you know, you know, I was so bad until someone gave me a kick in the ass or, you know, the, the, the proper guidance. And man, it changed everything when I heard that. Um, I was just running on a treadmill until then. So whatever that looks like. Definitely. Thank you. Um, all right. So we're, we're at 12 and I appreciate your willingness to go over. I want to um, give everybody a chance to get back to it and respect your time as well. I did, I did notice the reference to Simon Sinek, um, who's uh, someone that, that John and I know. Um, he has not offered to do one of these, which I, again, I want to thank you very much, John, for taking your time today. Simon, uh, I did reach out to see like how much it would cost. And, you know, the number was just astronomical. But what was more cool was besides the six-figure number, um, if you're bringing him in, you, you have to pay for him and a significant other and his bodyguards. I was like, yeah. wow. So, so when I he, added that to my contract. That, you, that, you, you yeah. know, if you ever bring me in again, you got to pay for my bodyguard. I, I don't know. You know, I, you know. I talked to him when we were at that GSEA thing at the New York Stock Exchange before his book came out. And he was doing like five grand speeches. I said, one day we'll let you come to College Works. Yeah. His book came out and he went up to 50 grand. And I called him up. I'm like, you got to hook a brother up here. We're not going to pay 50 grand. He said, I do not adjust my rates, which I know you don't adjust your rates either. So you and I did that trade that one time to keep your rates solid. And then I went to look at it again and his rates were 175 grand. I thought, yeah, yeah wow, I was going to say, guy, that guy yeah. did it right. He does plus, have a great plus bodyguards. I want to have, have a reason to have a bodyguard. He does have a great book and a great concept. I still, to this day, think he stole it from me, but he did a better job than I would have ever done with it. Um, and he did not come and give us any discounts. I want to thank you again. Uh, uh, John, a couple people participated in one of his uh, webcasts a few, a few days ago, I think it was. You'll see him more. Um, hopefully, you guys are reading his newsletter. Like I said in the beginning, there is no one in the world uh, with better credentials. No one in the world has worked with a more famous customer service people. Uh, Ford, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that John was the person that invented it until I was talking to him earlier and I know a lot of you use that. Yes, now what's the question? That's a concept we've carried for a long time. There is no no. Yeah, what's the question? So we've gotten a lot out of John. Really excited that you all could be here again. Like I said in the beginning, this group of people is, is an amazing group of people. You guys have been through a lot. And, you know, John was talking about the attitude. Uh, it's, this recession is for us, not done to us. This uh, COVID is for us, not done to us. And I think that's the attitude that many of you are having now. Turkeys fly in a tornado and your competition is falling out of the air and time to go clean it up. So thank you very much again, John. That was fantastic. Thank you, everybody, for making it. It has been recorded and we will share it. The chat's going crazy saying thanks for your time. John, everybody have a great rest of your day and a rest of your week. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Hopefully Thanks, this Matt. hat isn't people's major take home, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Take care. Thank you.